Hi everyone, it's Kathleen. I'm back today to show you the stage of my flip-flop journals that I am making. And let's have a look. I have several things here on the go. I started to show you how I put the envelopes together. Now that I'm in my craft room, I can take this out and I can show you what I did. Okay, well that's not what I wrote down on there. Let's, sorry, I was, I'm, I hope I didn't write on all of them. Okay, I didn't write on all of them. Okay, so what I've done, I'm trying to use up my supplies. I have used all envelopes that I have. I chose one smaller envelope for the front and I have used four envelopes that when they're opened up, you can see that that's the flap of the envelope. This is the flap of the envelope, that's the front. So when I open that little flap, I put glue on the flap and then I just lay an envelope down. Glue on the flap, put the envelope down, glue on the flap, envelope down, glue on the flap, envelope down, and I don't want a pocket there, so I just glued that shut. So now I have one, two, three, four, five envelopes. If I said four, it should be five. One, two, three, four, five envelopes, because what I'm going to do is, if this is going to be my front, then I have a top of the mountain and I have a valley. Every valley will be a signature that I'm going to stick in here with papers. So that's one signature. And if I fold it up this way, so I have one signature, two signatures. This idea is from 507 Willow House Journals and she folds her flip-flop journals differently so she can have hers going inside like this. My, my scrappy journals stick out all over the place. I know hers does too, but I never want to trap, trap my journal inside here. I want them to stick out. So that's just how I have created them. It's not right, it's not wrong, it's just different ways. So one, two signatures. And if you, this is the back, if you flip it over, you have two more valleys. And the two more valleys will be for, whoopsie, two more signatures. So that's how you create it. This is just, and when I would do this one here, well, I don't like those little flaps there. So I would just go with my scissors and I would trim these guys off. Because they're going to be covered up with paper. So that's what that little flap is. I'll put this away. And this is the unfinished one. Mine have, mine have all um, those window envelopes, but I covered all mine up. So this is the covered up version. I want to show you the stages because when people build them, they right away add the signatures or the papers in there and you don't really see or understand, at least I don't, I don't understand, maybe you do, the where these signatures go. And actually, I want to see what the back the backs look like, the foundations look like. So that's that's what I want to show you today. I This is the small little envelope portion and I have covered that with, I'm using Tim Holtz paper so you can see this red striped portion, red striped portion is underneath first layer on top of the outer of the envelope. Then I have that sheet music torn, and then I have a square. That's on that outside cover. 
I wanted to show you that I have layers. Layers of Sam Pool Polaroids. I You can use embossed paper, but I don't like to get out my machine because back issues, blah, 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 too lazy to go downstairs, can't, buy, can't do it. Can't do the stairs anymore. So I use paintable textured wool paper for that. It, it looks the same and I don't have to do it. I have to buy a big roll of like 40 bucks worth, but hey, I bought it years ago and I'm just about out of it, so that's fine. Box, card corrugated box. I pierced two holes and tied some jute to make a little bow. So when all this is sewn, like I can't sew this, I can't sew this or glue this on right now. I will be using score tape, which I haven't used in forever when I used to make books. And so mine will have the score tape on the back and it'll be stuck this way. And I've made a whole bunch of these because I'm making 14 journals. Look at how pretty each one of these looks. The only thing that's different is the image from Sam Pool. And I think they're absolutely gorgeous. These Polaroids of Sam Pools are so beautiful. Gorgeous. So these are made waiting to be used with Suguang tape. So here I am, I wanna show you the bare base of this journal, the bare base. So I have this here today because I'm gonna show you how to cover something and I'm gonna make two little things today for the base. So inside, this is my envelope flap. I used a big, this is Tim Holtz paper. I used a whatever this is, if it's four inches, I cut a four inch strip off the 12 by 12. And I always leave a little bit of space. I glued those two down. I always leave a little bit of space, a little bit of space. And then when I measure this one, a little bit of space and then right to the end. The top, they're right to the end of that. I folded down the dictionary papers. If you can, if you want to look back at my previous video, I showed you how to do that. These things here, I'm trying to use up everything on my desk. I've got so much stuff I can't work on my Tim Holtz. I said the wrong thing on my Edith Holden journals. So I had these just sitting here. So what do I want to do with them? Well, I want to use them. So I, w I thought, well, that's I like things and stuff hanging down underneath. So I just placed it down. I measured for where the Tim Holtz paper is and I cut it, so then I glued it on. I've noticed that when I pre-make my pages, I use, I love Uhu Goo. I thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. It still is the best glue stick. However, my Edith Holden book pages, which I have pre-made and are sitting in file folders waiting for me to assemble them, are now slowly, because they're so hard, glue dries hard, and if you bend the paper, it starts to separate. I have found this, it's like art glitter glue. I live in Canada, this was probably purchased at Michael's, and it's ultra bond adhesive. Dries clear, permanent, and this is what it says it can glue. Adheres paper, wood, metal, glass, button, beads, sequins, glitter, charms, and more. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's strong. It's strong because when I glued something, I tore some of my paper off. That's how good it is. So I'm going to... It comes with a small little nozzle, but it gives you a lot of glue out of there. So I squeezed that glue... It's like art glitter glue. What did I call this thing? Ultra Bond. These are fine line applicators, and it it has uh, it's. I use it for paint. I have some for paint and some for to paint to write with. And this is my glue bottle, and it is. It has a tiny syringe type hole, 
in the tip. It's very, very small. And this has the cleaning, a long cleaning shaft that fits inside and it squeezes it down. It does the same thing as the ladies that I see on YouTube use a uh, safety pin on top of those bonds. So good glue. Showed you this. So let's have a look at what I have done so far. Outside cover, I explained. That's half a dictionary page. Well, no, this is one whole dictionary page because I had a small little dictionary. F folded in half and then accordion folded and stitched. I use that, I want to call, call it art glitter glue. It's called Ultra Bond Adhesive. And I glued on three sides and it makes a pocket. I hand stitched that down and I created another pocket. Art glitter glue and then this was art glitter. I call it art glitter glue. It's this ultra bond adhesive. Okay and inside my first envelope because this opens up I will have something in this signature. I told you I've made a folder. Do I even have, uh, what did I do with them? Do -do -do. I hid these things so good that even I can't find them. Okay, here. This isn't done yet because I haven't gone to the sewing machine and stitched them. This is a kit from Amity Bloom that I bought eons ago and I haven't made it. So I've made this to put in here. So I can only explain certain things because I'm not going to take you to my sewing machine because my sewing machine isn't, isn't, uh, isn't great for that. So this is actual lining fabric, probably nylon, but it looks like that railway fabric. It's so thin. I want thin but sturdy because I'm going to be stitching. I want to reinforce this. I want to reinforce this this uh, spine, this little tiny envelope spine. Paper, eventually, if you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, it'll eventually break off. So you need to reinforce it. I like how these pinstripes go because I have a pinstripe for my zip, for my, my machine foot to follow on one side and a zipper foot for my machine to follow on the other side. So my plan is to, in the spine, put this piece of fabric and, now where is it? It's this that I want to stitch. Could I stitch in here? Well, yes, I guess I could. Or I can stitch in here because it's I'll have to see which has the more, I can't remember now, which has the flap. Oh, this has the flap. So maybe this will go. So this is a piece that will be going in here just because I had it. I want to do it. I'll be embellishing it and it will be going in here. Can you see already the pressure that's on here? That's why I want to reinforce this seam with this fabric. So this will be decorated. It'll have laces and snippets on it to make it look prettier. So prior to me sewing this on, these will have to be stitched on. Now I wasn't sure whether I wanted it. This, the, le the length of the envelope. But I'm... Not sure yet. If I want to see that, I probably do. It's hard to say. So I got a little piece I have to stitch on there. Yeah, where's my scissors? Uh, do I even have any fabric scissors here? Yes, I do. Okay, a glue stick. I'm just going to stick this down temporarily. 
before I, it looks like basting. I'm going to stick it here just for, now there is a right side and a wrong side. So let's put that center stripe right in the center there. And I'm going to put it right at the bottom. And lay it down flat. I don't know if I got enough glue up on top of here or not. Okay, so that's one fabric hinge that's going to be sitting like that. I will be taking it to the sewing machine on the right side. And some people will say, can you please show me on the sewing machine? No, I can't because of how my craft room is done. I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to back stitch. I'm going to back stitch, go all the way down and back stitch just on the envelope. For me, I knew where that cover was. Oh, here there. So that's the one side. Then this side, I have to open this up. And do I have anything? Yes, I'll explain this back side in a minute. Wherever I'm going to have a, a a signature of papers is where I'm going to lay my fabric reinforcing seam. So again here, I'm going to go on my sewing machine and I might go on this side because you'll see this side more readily. So I'm going to go back stitch, I'm going to back stitch all the way down and back stitch. So that little seam will be done. But I didn't show you the base yet, so let's have a look. So we open that up. We'll have this signature in here, which I'll be working on and doing. This was an envelope that was open. Someone on YouTube, um, when I was watching many of the there's not well there's flip-flop journals but they don't label them flip-flop um, so it's it's hard to kind of find them but what I saw is someone put a coiled piece coiled ripped torn piece of paper in there that's what I did I thought that was a great idea it looks great on the outside I love it I don't like to ink I don't like the little ink bits all over the place for my rubber daub my foam dauber so I'm not inking I'll be putting something inside there with tags you'll see later on so i'm showing you the base and this is glued in it's all the way in my envelope and i just put a i put some glue here stuck my coiled white piece of paper in there hold it press down and voila coiled sheet sticking out i just like the way that looks i'm using up my scraps this is a scrappy journal so when we open it up, maybe I should open it up this, well, you know that the signature is going like that. I don't know if you need to see this. Oh, better not lose my fabric scissors. For me, seeing this base is very important. People don't show you this base, but I want to. This is my envelope, the little one, and then you have the one with the flap. All the others are closed. I created, this will be the valley in here. I'm, gonna, I'm going to be putting some of this in here right away because wherever I have some of this fabric, that's where I'm going to have a signature. So when you fold this over, I've made book pages, book page pockets, corner pockets. Where's my piece of paper? So this is a... A book page like that and it would have been folded over like that it's double 
this portion here. This portion of the, it's a big portion like this, that's double, folded down. Then I went another one that's folded a little smaller and put it down like this. Then I took some craft paper and it was ripped and I like to straddle my paper over the edge. So that's how I got that. And it's glued down on two sides with that ultra bond glue. So I have a large pocket in here on my base and a second pocket. So my, my tags have to be thin because right now it's not stitched. I will be stitching it. So that's, I wanted to use book page pockets for my base. Two corner pocket tucks. This is a book page that is like that. Well, it's only about this, this big. And so if my book page is that big, what did I do? I just folded it this way. And then I folded it back. And these were pre-made a while ago. I went and I ran it through the sewing machine. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a zigzag, I'm sorry, a straight stitch sewn on here. And it is glued on three sides. And it's, oh, not on this side. So it's glued on two sides, bottom and right side. And it's a pocket tuck using book page. So now this is where a signature is going to be again here, except it's going to be a nice big signature. Not this one, but something, something like this. And because I need this, this is a very thin fabric. Again, I want to make sure that this lasts because that's only paper. I'm not going to vouch for it. And it's only modern envelopes. So I'm not going to vouch for that either. So I'm going to take my glue stick and I'm just going to run one line of glue on one side one line of glue on the other side okay I have to let shock out do you want to go out shock talking on the phone and he thinks someone's here. So anyway, let's go with this. And let's take plain camera, I guess I am the center and let's go up. I like it to stick up about a quarter of an inch. Glue stick is just tacking it in place before I can go to the sewing machine. Whoa, okay. And if that's okay, it's still a pocket. Where's my, my tag can still go in here. My big fabric scissors and I just like to leave a quarter of an inch approximately and I'm gonna cut that off. So a signature will be in here. This little thing that I've made will go inside here. Wherever there's a fabric strip, there's going to be a signature. I talked about that already. And I'm gonna fold that up. And then we have the last signature in here. So let's you see how nice it is going to get these little bits sticking out. So I'm going to take those two out. I'm still going to spread it out so you can see what they look like. And let's talk about this last signature flap. Okay, so I wanted to use book pages. So I have put a printable 
on one side that I have printed off and it's just been sitting here. And I will be doing more to it, but I just wanted you to see that I have book page, pockets, tucks, pullouts on my base. And then this one, these are two pages, two book pages glued together. And then I made two banners and I sewed the banners together. You can see where the center line goes up the center of that one. I just, OCD, I just had to do it. So where is my tag? And so it's a top tuck. This will have something on here to pull, but I haven't got that far yet. So because I'm gonna have, let's fold this up again, little in the front. I'm having a signature here. Here, let's give it a little bit more glue. Wherever you see this fabric is where I am going to be placing a signature. I got this. Okay, this is coming apart. So let's, I didn't put too much glue, but I do want to have it down there. And now let's put glue over here because we're this is where the other signature is going to go and we're going to take this again this is not ironed that and I just tore it that's why it's a little bit sticking up so I take that center stripe, which really helps stick it over about a quarter of an inch like I like. And just keep pressing in the center all the way down. Scissors. I wish people would explain the backing. They just decorate. So I'm sure to me it's very helpful if I see this first before I go and I decorate it. This helps my brain figure it out a lot better. So this is the base of the flip flop journal on this side. So you can see when it is folded, wherever there's a fabric strip is where I'm going to have a signature. Oh, there we are. That would be, th these are not the signatures going in here, but this will just show you how it's progressing. And this little guy. I'm not sure how I'm going to have to close him, but already you can see how nice and thick it is. And it feels so good in your hand. So let's turn it over. So this is my journal in the front. That's the back. I'll probably be collaging on that side. So when we open up the back, that's going to be our third signature. And that's going to be our fourth signature. So this is the back cover, that cover, and we open it up. So I made a, this, there are top tucks. I made a top tuck and the top tuck, and I made a top tuck out of a doily and a half circle. So how did I get the half circle? Well, I told you I want to use up my scraps. So what do I have? Do you remember these envelopes? Do they even still have them in the craft stores? Those are those, I don't know if you called them petal, petal envelopes. It's a square 
or a petal card maybe. Petal card. And let's open it up. And it's like this. So I bought these at Michael's. I love craft. If I see craft things, I buy them. So I just take my scissors and cut that off. So I have one of these. And I take my, this is a paper doily, and I try to find us. This is kind of big, small, 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 big. So on the big arcs, I just want to lie them, line them up so that they're equal. And I just found a doily that was a little bit larger than this circle because I know I want my doily layout to look like this. So let's fold this back because that's the back cover. And this is the layout for the signature that's going to go in here. So with this, this is too flimsy for me to be a pocket. So this is this is very firm. So glue stick. Let's take this off. And my half circle, I'm going to line it up. So it's exactly half. And I'm going to put some glue, fold it over, and let's fold this over. What a difference. A couple weeks ago, we were at minus, minus 43, 44, 45, 46, and now we're plus nine. Yes, we are. We're plus nine. Shorts weather. Woo! Crazy. Only in Alberta. You don't like the weather? Wait five minutes. Okay, here we go. This is still wet. Do I have do I have a similar pattern? Yeah, I got this pattern. So this should be a little bit drier. I just want that to dry. Let it dry before you start cutting it. So on the top, I lined up my doily with the top of my journal and at the point and then I just lowered it and I drew a mark and I cut because you want this to bend so you don't want to fill in this with paper we're going to use fabric so that's how I did the top part to do the bottom flat edges on the top Flat edge is now going to be on the bottom, but opposite. And so I can see where I'm cutting. I'm looking for a line. There's a nice line. I'm going to the edge of this Tim Holtz paper. And I drew my line. This, you can hear how how nice and firm that is. So my, whoops, cover this up. I don't want this to dry out. And get my Ultra Bond, which is like, what did I say, glitter glue? Okay, when I'm looking at this, I wanna have it glued in two spots, two lines, and you just have a very small very small line And that's how strong it is. You don't need much more than that. And line it up with the bottom and the side because I will be going over this with the sewing machine. And look at that, that's how strong it stuck. It stuck to my paper because I had it flipped so this was sticking out, but I like it better with my two doilies facing in. So if I had that big of a problem taking it off, you know it sticks well. The other two sides of that cut doily, and I'm lining it up with the Tim Holtz paper because I do not want to go in the crease of that envelope because it this is heavy heavy cardboard or cardstock I'm sorry and it will won't bend very well 
make sure you cover that up. You don't want that nozzle clogged. So you see how nice this is? This is the back of the journal. You open it up and that'll be your first signature. So I need some more of this stuff now. Wow, I love this. I think I got this from you, Lisa. This is so awesome. Lisa lives in Canada. She lives in a different province. All provinces have different supplies in secondhand stores. So Lisa and I have become friends over the years and I send her journals and some supplies and she sends me supplies and that has developed into a nice friendship. There we go. So I'm laying this down. I'm following that this center stripe. You saw how I had to pull that slightly. Okay, I really like how this is going to look. And again, about a quarter of an inch, and I just trim that off. So this is the back, back of my journal. And you open it up, and this is where one signature will be. You have room for your whoa. I might have to take my glue and glue those ends in so they're actually sealed. So I would go with this glitter glue here. Don't need too much, just a little line. Do that later when I'm off camera. Don't need to waste your time doing that. Cover it up. Look at how nice that is. So this is the back, the top of the valley or the outside portion. That's the inner spine where the signature is going to be. And then let's open it up. And this is where another signature is going to be. Okay, so I've got too many signatures here. This is where that signature is going to be. Okay, so I like how these pieces of fabric will help reinforce my journal. And so what I have in here this little section, and that of course is the front, this is where we put the signature. I'm going to open it up and it's the same sort of thing. So what do I want? I want a library pocket in the back. I have these mass made, but I don't have 14 of them. So I do have a book page. Actually, this feels thick. So yes, there's two of them in there very old. This very old paper feels like flannel. So what I have done, my book page, even though I have trimmed them down for myself, it is it is too wide. So I lined it up with the outer edge. I know this is the center. So then I cut that tiny little sliver off because I do not want to go in here. So how I made these is I have all 14 of these ready to go. They're 14 pages which are going to be library cards. So I have this. It's a book page that I just folded up. I have these printables 
tons of printables here. So I'm going to use take a printable. I, 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 this one just happened to fit, fit on the pocket. So here, let's do, let's do that one. Let's take, I love that one. Okay, so let's take that one. So how did I make that? So let's go to the side. Let's put this away. So I have a book page. That's exactly the same width as my envelope. And I love this bag paper. It has stripes, different color of craft stripes. And I cut it the height of this front part. But I want, I like to, I like to, I like my paper torn. And so I went about an inch inward, made a little cut an inch in, go up about an inch, and then I kind of go veer over to the side. Whoa. Okay, so now this is going to be, oh, let's, let's use this smaller one. Let's put this smaller one over here, and let's glue this one down. So you see how it's, how it is here? So I spread it apart and I'm gonna leave that one on top. I'm gonna to glue this one down with a glue stick. Whoa, I got a very moist glue stick. Just had to buy another pack of 10 glue sticks because I burned through all of them the other day. So I'm gonna line this up at the bottom. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the straight side. Take this and uh, I want to go down about, let's go down about half an inch. Okay, and I'm more concerned about this side, this side here, because that will be covered up with fabric. This will be covered up with fabric. So now I can take, here, let's open this up. Make sure we get glue on the edges. Fold it down, because I love to straddle my papers. Fold our library pocket. And what does this say? Reward souvenir of M-E-R-I, Merrick, Merritt, I don't know. Anyway, so this one here, I'm going to have taller because, because it is taller. I, I want to keep this blue line, so I don't want to cut it down uh, any, any at all. So I'm just going to make sure it's at the end because I know I'm going to be stitching. I'm going to be stitching on those two sides. On my sewing machine. I'm stitching because I used a glue stick on this back and I'm not sure how strong this glue stick is going to last on there because it's going to be opened and closed a lot. So I lined up this right hand side, I lined up the bottom, and I like that little shape. So I'm going to do some hand stitching on here. I'm going to do some hand stitching just on the top with red. And how I determine that is because on my front, if I have this red pin striped, I'm going to use red stitching. And I have about four that have the blue, I call it pin stripe, but it's that engineer's pattern from Tim Holtz. And after that is stitched, then I'm going to take this fine line applicator with my Ultra Bond glue and I'm just going to glue these two edges of my library pocket closed. Then I will put more glue on the back and my glue stick and then lay it down 
like that. So then it'll be a library pocket. So where is, where is, where is my tag? Here we are. So you can see that this is a library pocket and I will have to get a library card and put it in there. Because I know that this is a signature, let's get this in here and then I'll explain my little pocket. I love this torn edge. It looks like an old wall that where the wallpaper is being torn off. This is an um, a coin envelope that I've made into a... Well, I didn't make it in... Well, I guess I did. This is a coin envelope and I've only glued two sides so it's a tuck as well. I'll show you how to get this in a second. Let's glue that on. You don't want to have too thick of a um, a fabric in here. You want as thin as possible but fabric fabric is strong and it'll hold keep your book together. And see how I'm lining up the center. And again, about a quarter of an inch, and I just snip. No measuring. Put that back. Okay. So, this portion here. This envelope is probably, again, from Michael's or either that or I was gifted it in Happy Mail. So I got this that I want to use as a tuck. So and I have these. This is 200 year old book pages and they are extremely brittle. Extremely brittle. They flake off very easy. Okay, so I know I can get four of these on an envelope. How do you get this bit here? You, I don't. I want it look like looking like it was torn off. So what I do is I take my glue stick, and I first of all I want to use this side here because I like this wide edge. So because I know I'm using this side, I'm going to put glue here. So on the, and I'm only putting it on the, this top, this bottom, and just on the left hand side, not anywhere in there, not on the, on the right hand side. So it'll be lined up like that. I see I have extra glue there. So I'm just going to try hard not to damage this paper because you'll see in a second, I'm going to fold my, you fold it and it's an instant break because it's that old and it must not have been stored in a humid environment, some very dry environment. So be this has to dry. Before I can start tearing it off, it has to dry. So I am just folding it and look at that, it just broke off. I'm just gonna leave this dry and let's get another envelope because, okay, I can use this way or I can use that way. I'm going to use this way again, so same sort of thing. Glue just on the top down the sides and across the bottom. I left this not glued. And I'm not, I'm going to line it up at the top. And, ooh, my page is a little bit short. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so there we go. There's no glue here. So let's put the drown. These I've done and I'm just waiting. These were done a while ago and they are dry. So I want to show you 
Where are my tweezers? Okay. Let's take, and it breaks off. You see, wherever there was glue, it stuck on. And I like the way that looks. I'm definitely going to save this and that. Put it in there. So that's an envelope. Or a coin pocket, I mean. And I would put a line of this very strong adhesive. Two lines. And glue it down. You saw, you see that this is right to the edge because I will be sewing over top of this. This craft paper is extremely thick, so I do not want to sew on it. So when I sew, I'm going to be sewing on the background, not on this at all. So I will be stitching on this grayish portion. So that's one envelope done. Let's have a look at this. So let's go and you very gently tear it. I'm going to save that because it's the precious. And I know it. Oh, there's, I can take more off here. So there we go. I could have left that on or I could have taken that off. So that's how that stays on. I just love how that looks. And this envelope. So let's take, save that. And if I can't get my finger under there, I will get my tweezers. And we're just gonna tear it off gently and we can leave that so I like the way that looks and it can sit like that so these little guys these are nice so if I wanted to do something like that and I'm going to look at how nice that it blends in you see how that looks so beautiful so let's it's upside down the writing there and the writing is right side up so maybe well that's too similar I like the shape of that maybe I'll take this off and I won't use it so I like the way that looks so I am going to take my glue stick And fill that with glue. Take it with my tweezers and I'm just going to stick it down there. And look at how beautiful that looks. I think that is so pretty. Okay, so these other little bits. Wow, I love that. We could even take some of those. So what is this here? Okay, let's put that one there because we can. Whoa! And let's take it like this. <laughs> Way to go. You see how fragile that is? You have to be very, very careful. 200 year old book pages are very fragile. So I love the way that turned out. Let's add some more of these torn pieces. Okay, let's add that in there. Oh, come on, please don't stick. Okay, and let's put that there. this oh. let's 
let's just fold this. Okay, I like that, so let's put that down there. You see how much interest this torn book page adds to the back? You see, I, I, I damaged that, so I'm going to try to put it back. Be very careful. just tear them off just a bit okay so let's do that one and it was sticking to my background so let's be gentle like a center so we're just going to put them in the center or within the page there we are you see how much visual interest that adds and my broken pages are there I'm gonna put those there. See how I was holding my breath? I don't know why I hold my breath, but I do. And let's get that one. A very soft glue. It'll soak into this very old book page. And look, it already came off a bit. Come on. Okay, let's have a look at our... Okay, this is the front. I will have to see how I'm going to decorate this. I'm not going to add any anything on there just yet. But this is the base. I think that's all that I see on my desk that I wanted to show you. So let's open this up again. One final look, and that'll be it for today. Okay, so we have the front. Oh, I have to go to the sewing machine. So where am I going to stitch? Good question. Oh, okay, so I'm going to stitch... On this uh, fabrics but I'm gonna start uh, I'm gonna start here on the front envelope go up and all the way back I'm gonna try to be a quarter of an inch away and then I'm gonna turn it over okay I see it here okay I'm, I'm going to be stitching I'm not gonna turn it over I'm going to start on the top I'm going to back stitch and do a straight line all the way down. I'm just doing vertical lines right now. Because this is fabric and I can't see, let's turn it over. And on the sewing machine, I'm going to start on the 
right hand side a gold quarter of an inch away so yes i'm gonna just move these little bits over and my i'm going to back stitch and go down i don't want to sew this on here because it will open up and i when i stitch this down this this side remember this is a pocket under here so i'm going to push these aside Then I'm going to go and I'm going to back stitch, back stitch, go all the way down, quarter of an inch from the edge, and back stitch. So in essence, I have back stitch not in the seam, not in the seam here or in the crease. I've back stitched, I, I've stitched a, a quarter of an inch on one envelope and a quarter of an inch away from the seam on the other envelope and I'm doing the same for this second strip I'm having two lines I'm not sewing in the center I'm sewing on either side of the envelope and then on this one same thing I could follow this If I follow this, it's easier because I have this, this vertical line that I can follow, this white down in the center. I'm going to go down. Then I'm going to go down the center on this one. So you have one strip, two strips. One strip, two strips, and three strips on the other side because that's small envelopes. You have your total of one, two, three, four. You have five strips, five strips to sew up and down and then I will see whether I can sew all the way across the top and then all the way across the bottom. So that way it'll be very secure. So I will go to the sewing machine. Am I done this? Let's fold this up and then let's have a look. So I have to stitch on the fabric, fabric hinges where the signatures are going to be. Here. And there so I like how I showed the inside base of this flip-flop journal so off I go to the sewing machine and sew this up thank you everyone for watching bye for now